Okay, so yeah, welcome you to today's lecture. Uh, uh, recording has started, right? Okay. Yeah, so what we were doing so far was uh, we, in the first part of the course, we dealt with the uh, statistical inference problems, which are called the problems of estimating parameters. And mainly we dealt with uh, uh, parametric uh, estimation problems. Right? Non parametric, we did not touch upon. You have a separate course on non parametric inference where you may slightly touch upon the non parametric estimation part. But in this course, we mainly dealt with the parametric estimation part. Then another category of uh, statistical inference problems uh, which uh, mm, arise in a lot of real life situations is the testing of hypothesis problem. Uh, where a certain hypothesis is given and you have to check the validity of the given hypothesis. Uh, then we saw that whatever decision you take, you are bound to make two kinds of errors. Uh, incidentally, it's not possible to minimize both the errors simultaneously. So what you do is you first decide which error is more serious for you. Something which is not negotiable, right? You cannot afford to make high errors on that. You put an error bound on that type of error. And then I said, you can always frame your hypothesis in such a way that wrongly rejecting null hypothesis is considered to be more serious. Otherwise you interchange the null hypothesis. So let us frame hypothesis in such a way that uh, rejecting, wrongly rejecting null hypothesis is considered to be more serious than uh, the other kind of error. So that means type one error is more serious for you. So what you do is you try to put a bound on a type one error and then look at among all the test procedures or decision procedures for which type one error is bounded by a quantity alpha, which is normally a lower quantity, very low quantity. You try to find out for which the second type of error is minimum. So note that while we are following this philosophy, I'm only guaranteed that my type one error is less than or equal to alpha. I don't have any guarantee. The only thing I know it is minimum, but minimum may be very 0.1 or 0.2. Or minimum may be very high, right? Minimum may be very high, that 0.9. So probability of type two error, although it is minimum, it may be 0.9. And then you would not like to make inferences based on that if that is the case. So philosophically, what it means is, if your test procedure says that reject H0, you can reject it with a lot of confidence because you know that probability of rejecting, wrongly rejecting H0 is fixed at alpha, which is 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or whatever, whatever bound you have put. But if you're not rejecting H0, you don't know. At least as a statistician, I would be hesitant to take any decision unless I do a further analysis in terms of the power of the test, right? So that is a very minute point which practitioners have to keep in mind. Uh, normally, if you uh, talk to social scientists and all that, they may not be aware of this uh, minute thing. Okay, look, the testing philosophy has been designed in such a way. That is why now, nowadays it is very standard to use the p-values. But p-values only, also only gives you the probability of type 1 error. It doesn't talk about type 2 error. Even if, you observe your p-value to be 0 0.001, the only thing you're sure about is wrongly rejecting H0 is only this much, right? So that you should always keep in mind. Then we did uh, uh, the famous Neyman Pearson lemma, which tells you how to find out the uniformly most powerful alpha test for testing simple versus uh, simple hypothesis. So let us try to look at what does the Neyman Pearson lemma was saying. So I have only two uh, given PDFs, F0 and F1, which are completely known to me. For example, one could be normal 0, 1, other could be Cauchy. So F0 and F1 are known PDFs are probability mass functions. 
what I have is uh, I have a random sample x1, x2, xn, or you can have x has PDF, join PDF, f, which belongs to the class P, which has only two PDFs, f0 and f1. All right. What I need to test is H naught, my null hypothesis is F is equal to F zero against F is equal to F. I have to test a simple null hypothesis against a simple alternative hypothesis. And I want my level to be alpha, which is some quantity between zero and zero. Normally I would fix this quantity to be something small. 0 0.05 is a very standard value which one uses, right? So what it says is the Neyman Pearson lemma first for first says that existence of MP alpha. Note that uh, I mentioned that sometimes I'll be using the word UMP alpha. UMP alpha would be used only when your alternative has more than one point, right? Because there you're talking about uniformly minimizing the second type of error, right? Here it is since only one point, so I'm just talking most powerful. What is the form of this rule? It says one, if F1X is greater than, strictly greater than C times F0X, gamma, Now, sometimes you may also derive uh, a rule where this gamma itself may depend on x, right? But we are not discussing. I'm saying that there will exist a rule for which this gamma will be independent of x. You can derive through your own means. That is a different thing. This result only says there will be a test of this type where gamma is, does not depend on x. It is constant. Zero. Where C belonging to zero, you can include infinity also. It says that expected value of F zero five star X. So there'll always be a one MPL for test, which would be of this type. Is that okay? It only talks about the existence of a MPL for test. There may be a lot, many more. I do not care about them for the time being. I'm interested only just one MP alpha test, and it says this is the MP alpha test. Now note that my requirement is level should be less than or equal to alpha. For this, it is exactly alpha, right? Priority of type one error is because my requirement is I want alpha level to be alpha. So I, my requirement is that this should be less than or equal to alpha. But it says no, there will be a one test for which this would be exactly alpha. And such a test would be most powerful. There may be some other test for which this is less than equal to alpha. And that is also most powerful. That means that has the same power as this test. So we come to that. So what I'm saying is in bachelor's, you studied Neyman Pearson lemma, but you did not go into these minute intricacies which are involved. It is speaking, this Neyman Pearson lemma is a simple statement. But it's speaking a lot. And you have to make out what are the things which it is claiming. First thing it is claiming is there will be there will always be an MP alpha test. Not only that, there will be always be an MP alpha test for which this would be alpha. It need not be less than equal. Alpha. And there will always be an MP alpha test which we need to have this structure. So it says too many things. Okay, so now then I come to about uniqueness of MPL for test. It says if pi double star is MP alpha, then phi double star. 
x has to be 1 if f1x is greater than c times fc x and 0 if f1x is less than c times fc x. That means its structure would be of this type. Now note that it doesn't say what would be expected to five star x. I, I only know that such a test would have expected to five star less than equal to alpha because my requirement is that levels would be less than equal to alpha, right? It says nothing beyond that. Is that clear? So if five star is UMP, MP alpha, it has to be of this type. That means the, the only way this test and this test can differ is in the reason F1 X equal to C times F0 X. So again, I'm saying, try to make out what are the things this uniqueness part is conveying. One thing it is conveying is, if this reason has a zero probability, if this reason has a zero probability, then what would happen? Then it is uniquely determined. Okay, then it would be more or less uniquely determined unless you have a test whose level is less than equal to alpha, right? Unless you have a test of this type whose level is less than equal to alpha, right? Now we'll come to this, we'll catch all these small intricacies when we do a few examples. So one example, uh, uh, let me do the normal one, x1, x2, xn, uh, iid, normal theta one. Theta is uh, belonging to R. Theta zero and theta one are specified. Specified constants. I have to test H naught that theta is equal to theta zero against H one that theta is equal to theta one. And suppose here, uh, yeah, I just look at this. Nothing else is given. Right? Find MP alpha test. There may be more than one, and then find out whether it is unique or not. Is it unique? So let us try to, I know there will always be a one test of this type. So first I try to look at this. But before I do that, because theta zero and theta one are specified, so I can determine which of them is larger and which of them is smaller. So I'll consider two cases. When they are specified, the case one where theta one is bigger than theta zero. And the second case is where theta one is less than theta zero, right? So case one, So first I try to look at what is my F theta X. Uh, joint density of X1, X2, X. Normal theta one, so it can be written as one by root two pi to power. There's nothing very special about one. You can take any known quantity sigma not greater than zero still. So one by root 2 pi to power n, e to power minus summation xi square by 2. Then e to power an x bar, right? n theta x bar, right? n theta x bar. Then e to power minus n theta square by 2. Okay, this is for the f theta axis. Now everything depends on whether this, if I call this quantity as delta x, whether that is greater than zero, less than zero, or this, and then I suitably choose 
what my C is. So delta X is F1X minus C times F0X. Now note that this would be common in both. Uh, so this would be F theta 1X minus F theta 0X, right? Because under H naught, theta is equal to theta zero. And theta. Now note that in this case, the PDF is same. They only differ in theta, right? So this would be common. This would be common, right? So it becomes one by root two pi to power N e to power minus n s n x i square by two. And then e to power minus n theta one square by two e to power n theta one x bar. And then e to power minus n theta zero square by two e to power n theta zero x bar. Is that okay? C times in between, which is one by root two pi to power n e to power minus n s n x i square by two. And I take, so how much this uh, becomes? I take e to power n theta naught x bar, first of all offside. And then I take this outside, e to the power minus n theta one square by two. You see, I could have taken the ratio also because f theta one x by f theta naught x is greater than c, right? That is what we have to look at. We'll do that from next time onwards, right? Because this, this is greater than zero is equivalent to saying that f theta one x by f theta naught x is greater than c. Suddenly, of course, I allow c to be plus infinity also because f theta one and f theta naught may have a different support. And there's a possibility that F theta one is positive in certain range, but F theta naught is zero. So keeping that in mind, I can always take F theta one X upon F theta naught X because that is easier to handle. But it doesn't matter. It becomes e to power N theta one minus theta naught X bar minus C times e to power N by two theta one square minus theta naught square. Is that okay? Now let us look at data x greater than C. Data x is greater than C. Sorry, data x is greater than zero is equivalent to saying what? Now note that these are all positive quantities. Exponential something, they all are positive quantities. So that is greater than zero if e to power n theta one minus theta naught x bar is bigger than this quantity, which is equivalent to saying that x bar is bigger than some quantity d, right? Because theta one is constant, theta naught is constant, everything is known, right? So this is equivalent to saying that x bar is greater than d. And in fact, you know d, what is exactly d in this term? D is log of this and whatever, right? Whatever. And just, I, don't, I don't care about D because finally D would, has to be determined, right? What that D would be. And delta X equal to zero? If and only if X bar is equal to D. Note that this quantity is zero under H naught as well as H1. And delta X is less than zero. X bar is less than this. Is it okay? Now, so UM most powerful alpha test, MP alpha test is phi star X, which is equal to one if X bar greater than D, zero if X bar less than D. I need not bother about what happens if X equal to X bar equal to D. In practice, it may happen, you can take anything. Whether you include here or include over here, doesn't matter. Because probability of that is zero. And how this D is chosen, 
theta naught phi star x has to be same as alpha, right? That is what my existence result about uh, name and Pearson lemma says. What does that mean? This is equivalent saying that probability under theta naught x bar greater than d is same as alpha. What does that mean? One minus probability x bar less than or equal to d should be one minus alpha, right? Which is same as phi root n. Under theta naught, you're talking about d minus theta naught is one minus alpha, right? Because x bar has normal theta one by n. So x bar uh, root n x bar minus theta has normal zero one. So I converted this probability into a normal zero one probability and I got this, is that okay? Because this is same as probability that x bar less than or equal to d is same as one minus alpha. X bar less than or equal to d I convert into normal zero one which is same as root probability root n x bar minus theta naught because I have to calculate this probability under h naught. So what is your d naught? What is your d? So that means d is nothing but phi inverse of one minus alpha by root n plus theta naught. Is that okay? So this d, you can put it over here and you get the MP alpha test. Now, is this MP alpha test unique? Is MP alpha test unique? Why? Because you know that my any MP alpha test would be of this type. My any MP alpha test should be of this type. Now, if my MP alpha test is of this type and probability x bar is equal to d is equal to zero, so what should be my d? Because I want probability enter h naught, it should be less than or equal to alpha, right? So, <laughs> so you you would have wanted this to be less than or equal to alpha, right? You have to choose that d is so that this d is less than or equal to alpha. then this would be less than or equal to alpha, right? Can you choose D to be uh, less than or equal to phi inverse one minus alpha root 10 plus theta naught? See, this is where I'm saying that you have to be careful about the interpretation of name and Pierce and lemma. What, does they, what did uniqueness set? For uniqueness, I know that my test would be of this type. But this D is same as from the original one, right? The part one which we derived. So this D has to be the same as this. So that is why this D has to be this. This you cannot change. This has to be the same as the part one. But in between you can interchange. But in, in between there is no scope of changing it because probability X bar is equal to D is zero. Is that okay? So that way, that way it is unique. Is that okay? So you see, uh, Yes, it is unique. Why? Because probability that X, the, the reason where I have some liberty to change it is X bar is equal to D. But note that when we are talking about uniqueness in the part two, there's that C is same as the C of the part one. Right? You cannot deal with the otherwise. If you deal with a new D over here, any D less than or equal to this quantity would do, right? Because you wanted label to be less than or equal to. Okay, is that clear or uh, should I again emphasize? So you see, what you do, what it is, what I'm trying to emphasize is anytime you have to see uniqueness, the first thing is one UMP alpha test you know, right? So that is what I did over here. I knew my what MP alpha test is. I have found out my MP alpha test. So let me write it down so that it is much more clear to you. So my MP alpha test, is one 
if x bar is bigger than whatever it is, theta naught plus phi inverse. I hope just make sure that I'm not making any mistake. And zero, if x bar less than theta naught. Is that okay? Now, what does the uniqueness part say? Uniqueness part says the other test, any other UMP alpha test would be of this type only. The reason where I can change is this part. Is that okay? <laughs> where X bar, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> so let's try to see another. Uh, Less than theta naught, you can do it exactly. It would be just inequalities would get it. So delta x would be positive x bar less than d, right? X bar less than d. And in that case, this would be nothing but d would be nothing but phi inverse alpha by root n plus theta naught, right? Exactly same thing you have to repeat, right? Yeah, because here the only thing you have, because if you recall, x e to power x bar theta one minus theta naught was coming. And you got that is equivalent to saying that x bar greater than c because theta one minus theta naught was positive. In the other case, when theta one is less than theta naught, e to power x bar, you'll have a e to power x bar theta one minus theta naught, but theta one minus theta naught is negative. So that quantity greater than c would be same as saying that x bar is less than some other quantity. Is that okay? Okay, so let us try to uh, do another example x1, x2, xn, iid, uniform, zero theta. Theta zero, theta one are fixed positive constant. All right. I'm interested in testing H naught that theta is equal to theta naught, H one that theta is equal to theta one. Find alpha is given to be between zero to one. Find MP alpha test. Okay, so let us try to. So again, because theta naught and theta one are completely specified, one of them would be bigger, right? So I can take one of them to be bigger. The test, the critical reasons would change depending on which one is bigger, right? So let us take uh, something which is theta one greater than theta naught again, uh, same as the last case. So case one, theta one is greater than theta naught. So first I see what is my F theta X. You know, F theta X is nothing but uniform zero theta. So one by theta to power N. If each x size between so x n is less than theta and each x size is positive, right? Maximum is less than theta. And each x size is positive, right? Each x size is positive, that means minimum is positive, right? Zero. Is it okay? So for x1 positive, because whether you are under theta or theta naught or theta one, minimum has to be greater than zero. So for minimum greater than zero, what is my F theta one X? By F theta naught X. So there would be a theta one over here, theta naught over here and theta one over here. So if X n, so one case would be when X n is less than theta naught, right? In fact, this minus C also I can consider because 
depending on whether C, where you have, where C lies, right? Because F theta one X is greater than C times F theta naught X is equal to saying that this divided by C, right? So X and less than theta naught, then both are positive, right? And you really want theta naught to power N by theta one to power N minus C. Is that okay? What is uh, when Xn lies between theta naught to theta one? Actually, what I would suggest is just to be careful when the supports are different. In normal case, taking this ratio would be very useful. Here also it would be useful, but you will get a much more clarity if you don't take a ratio when supports are not same. So, there is, so that you can, then later on you can see what would be the, so for example, in this case, what happens in this case? Under H naught, it becomes zero. And here one, so it becomes infinity minus C. Right? Is that okay? So which is infinity? Right. So what does that mean? Yeah. Can you tell me what would be the type, uh, what would be the structure of my MPL for test? Yes. How does it look like? When it will be one? Can you tell me when it will be one? That's why I said you'll get more confused. So let me write down, write it down. Uh, then you can see the ratio. Let's first let me write down in terms of delta x so that you can clearly very easily see because then this infinity kind of a thing would not be occurring. So let us consider delta x, which is f theta one x minus c times f theta zero x. Again, note that here two cases would arrive. One where xn is less than theta naught. Xn is less than theta naught, that means Xn is less than theta one also, right? That means both of these would be positive, right? So it would be nothing but one by theta one to power N minus C times one by theta naught to power N. Is that okay? Xn is greater than theta naught. Then what would be this quantity? Then F0 is zero, right? It is only, so that means C times, so it is only one by theta one to power. Is that okay? Now, what my test says, I'll first find out the test about which I'm sure, which is the first part. What is the structure of test? It says one, if delta X is greater than zero, Z, uh, gamma if delta x is zero and zero if delta x less than zero. So of course, this quantity is always positive. So according to that test, I should always take my phi to be one if xn is greater than theta naught. But I'm not sure about this quantity. This can be less than zero, bigger than zero, or even less than zero. So that means let us consider different, I to begin with, you consider all possible C because you can always determine C. Final condition is I should get my label to be alpha. Right? So let's look at case one. You see, I'm, the reason I'm doing it is you will not get such a nice explanation anywhere. So deep understanding of Neyman Pearson lemma comes through this example. Okay, so the first case is I start from the left values of C. So when this is negative, negative means C is bigger than, or let us look at, I start with C less than, right? So C is less than theta naught by theta one to power n, because my C has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? 
C has to be that I know that C has to be greater than or equal to. It can be infinity, that is not a problem. If C is bigger than or equal to this quantity, then what is this quantity? Yeah, one by theta one minus C by theta to power n is positive. So these are positive. That is also positive. Then this says my phi stars would always be one. Is that okay? My phi stars would always be. Can you achieve a level alpha through this? Expect to phi star will always be one. So if I wanted that to be less than or equal to alpha, it will never be achieved. Is that okay? So I cannot, so this test, which is phi star x is one for all x, this cannot achieve e theta naught phi star x is equal to alpha. Right? Because I'm looking at the first part only, where the test says that e theta naught phi star has to be alpha. Right? So this cannot be ever, unless alpha is one, right? And alpha is equal to one, I said we'll, now we'll always talk about alpha between zero to one. Right? Because my alpha is strictly between zero to one. Because alpha is equal to one doesn't make any sense. Alpha is equal to zero will make your power to be zero, right? If your test is zero throughout, after glue phi star is zero, that means its power under H1 is also zero. Okay, now the second case is, I first take C strictly bigger than that quantity. Or C I can take to be exactly equal to theta naught by theta one to power n. Is that okay? In this case, what happens? This quantity is zero. That means in this case, I take I gamma, right? So my phi star x is same as gamma if xn is less than theta naught and one if xn is greater than theta naught. Is it okay? Is it clear? And how this gamma has to be determined? I'm applying only the first part. So e theta naught pi star x should be exactly alpha, right? By the first part, I'm trying to look at what would be. What does that mean? That means gamma times total t under theta naught, xn is less than theta naught, plus total t under theta naught, xn is greater than theta naught, should be same as alpha, all right? What is this probability under H naught? What is the probability that Xn is bigger than theta naught under H naught? Zero, because and you know that Xn is always less than theta, right? So it would be zero. And this would be one. So what does that mean? Gamma has to be same as alpha. So what is your MP alpha test? Phi star x, sorry, which is uh, gamma, sorry, alpha, if xn less than theta naught, and one, if xn is. I still have to see one more choice, right? Because uniqueness, I'll come to later, but first I'll see what is the case when c is bigger than. So one of your alpha test, we have found it out. Now only thing is, can I find more? That is what I'm trying to look at. C is bigger than theta naught by theta one to power n. What does that happen? That means this is less than zero. So here phi star is zero. So phi star x is zero. If x and less than theta naught, and one if x and greater than theta naught. Can you achieve uh, 
What is E theta naught F phi star X? Zero, right? So again, this, this doesn't work because I want my I wanted this quantity to be less than or equal to alpha. So less than or equal to alpha, but in this case, what would be my level? Level would be same as so if if what would be the what would be the power in this case? Power would be one. So, so you have said, uh, yeah, let us try to, let us uh, try to see this case, case very, uh, very carefully. So what you have is C is less than, uh, uh, C is bigger than theta naught upon theta one to power N. C is bigger than, uh, so that means this is less than zero. So that means phi is zero if Xn is less than theta naught uh, and one if Xn is bigger than or equal to theta naught. I want, E theta naught phi star X, which is same as uh, E theta, yeah, E phi star equal to, yeah. So I want, yeah, but I wanted this to be exactly alpha because by part one, this quantity has to be exactly alpha and alpha is between zero to one. So this cannot happen, right? So this case is ruled out from that uh, uh, viewpoint. So that means I have got one MP alpha test, which is this. The question is, is it unique? Is that clear by third part? Because third part, you see, let us look at what is our modus operandi. Our modus operandi is first I find out MP alpha test using the first part. And first part says that my condition is E theta naught five stars would be same as alpha, which is not happening over here. Once I have found my MP alpha test using part one, then I try to see whether it is unique or not. That comes as a second step. So now I'll see whether it is unique or not. Yeah. Is MP alpha unique? Anyone, I would invite any suggestions from anyone of you. Yeah, is it unique? First of all, the first thing which you should see is, where is the scope to play around? What is the reason you can play around? Huh? When delta x is zero. And delta x was coming out to be zero in this range. So I have a reason to play around over here. I can change gamma. You see, just changing gamma will not do. Because gamma will turn out to be exactly same as alpha. If, if I don't change anything here, put gamma one, then my gamma won't turn out to be alpha, you'll get the same test. But the one thing is I can change this reason over here. In certain reason, I can take gamma to be still one, right? Because Xn greater than theta naught is coming. So this was theta naught, Xn greater than theta naught is one. And it is saying over here, it is gamma. So what I can do is, I can further increase this range and say that Xn greater than some constant, it is one and less than that constant is zero because I, I can play around with this gamma. This lies in the reason where delta X is zero. So I consider five star X as one. So I make this whole gamma to be one rather than I shrink this reason one if xn is greater than c and then rest of the places I can make it to be less than. Okay, so this gamma I've broken into two parts. In certain reason I make gamma to be one and certain reason I make it to be zero. Right. You know that uh, I would like to introduce only one constant. One may say, why only two? Why you cannot break it into three? Different, you can take zero, again gamma, again something. 
because my condition is only one. So I'll be able to determine only one constant, right? That is the reason. So this looks like a reasonable one, but I cannot say that this is most powerful alpha test. I would be able to say it more powerful alpha test. First of all, it should, label should be alpha. And what, what is the second thing I should show? It should be power. No, power should be maximum, that is okay, but maximum power test I have already derived. So I should say that its power is same as the power of that test, right? These are the only two things I should show. Okay, so uh, I look at E theta naught phi star x, which is same as tau t under h naught, that xn is greater than c. Now this c I know is my less than theta naught, right? This C is less than theta. So what is this? C to theta naught and T to power N minus one by theta naught to power N DT. Is that okay? And how much this turns out to be? So uh, this becomes theta naught one minus, yeah? C by theta naught to power n, right? I want this to be less than or equal to alpha, first of all. That gives me some choices of C. But I want that power of this test should be same as the power of other test. What was the power of this test? The other test which you have written on, which was the gamma over here. What are the power of that test? The power of earlier test, power of MP alpha test. That was how much alpha times probability that? Yeah, can you tell me what is the power of that test? That is alpha times. Yeah. Alpha times probability that xn less than theta naught under H1. Okay. Plus is that okay? Now you can choose here. So this you can calculate, right? Exactly what this quantity is. Now you choose C. So that that quantity is exactly same as this quantity. Is that okay? Because this power, you know, you can always choose C such that this integral, which, which you have found out of power over here, what is the power over here? Property under theta one, Xn is greater than C. Now, one thing you note over here, if I want my power to be maximum, my C should be, what should be my C? It should be minimum, right? So for here, C, what is the C minimum? So you get, in fact, you've got the choice of C. The best choice of C in this case, because you're trying to maximize this thing, this would be maximum because these are decreasing function of C, right? Because probability xn greater than c is one minus distribution function. And distribution function is increasing, so one minus. So this is a decreasing function of c. So if I want this to be maximum, my c should be minimum. And what is the condition my c? That this should be less than or equal to this thing. So what is the minimum c for which this condition is satisfied? Yeah? What is the minimum c for which this condition is satisfied? That is one minus c theta naught times one minus alpha to power. And now you can show that with this choice of C, this power is same as exactly this. Is that okay? You can show that with that power of C, this is exactly same as this. And that proves that there is another MP alpha test. Is it clear? So, uh, so as I said in the beginning that an M and PSL lemma has a lot of things hidden into it. So my, if, if a simple question is asked that X1, X2, Xn, IID uniform zero theta, 
you have to test H naught theta is equal to one against theta is equal to two. That is the first part. Find the MPL for test. Of course, MPL for test we found out. Then I said whether it is unique. Then you have to see for uniqueness, let us see what is the reason where I can play around. And I saw that the play, reason where I can play around is xn less than theta naught, where I have one MP alpha test gives whole alpha weight to it. Then I says, since I have a liberty to play around, let me play around a bit. And I says, I, this gamma, which is alpha in the whole reason, I make it one and zero in certain reasons, right? So please don't solve that. And that is, that is the way you could. So what I would suggest is uh, try to digest a bit of it. There is no standard uh, protocol through which uh, you can understand this. The only way is you have to understand what is written inside the name MPS. And what is written is very simple. It says, look, if the reason F1X equal to C times F0, first find out the, uh, there is at least one MPL for test. Find out that. Any other MP alpha test would be of this type only. The reason where they can change is where it will differ is where F1 X equal to C times that, that reason, which is in this case was Xn less than theta naught. So in this reason, MP alpha test may differ from each other. They will not differ from each other in the region Xn greater than theta naught. There is no scope to change over there. Now, once I realize that, then I say, hey, if I have to change over here, if it is gamma throughout, let us try to play around with this gamma. But playing around cannot be blind. Finally, you have to play around in such a way that level remains alpha and the power is same as the power of the one MP alpha test which I have derived. Right? So you'll have to go into two, three steps to show that. Right? Okay, so let me stop over here and uh, uh, yeah, so we'll meet on Wednesday. I'll try to do one or two more examples so that you have a, a better clarity of uh, uh, Neyman Pearson Lama. Yeah. 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 No, so that's what I said. Now I emphasize first note that what I'm trying to do is. I'm trying to first find out one MP alpha test. That means I'm trying to use the part one, which gives me one MP alpha test. That MP that that part one says if you have to find that MP alpha test, e theta zero for that test has to be exactly same as alpha, right? And I saw that if I find it out that MP alpha test using the first part, I'm not able to get it because this has to be exactly same as alpha, and my alpha is strictly between zero to one. So you're right to the extent that this test would have a label alpha. But then, as I said, it will not be most powerful because when you go to the power of this test, that would also be very small compared to most powerful alpha tests. So remember, and that's the reason I've been emphasizing time and time again. My algorithm is very simple. Level level Pearson lemma says, first to find out what is your MP alpha test. At least be sure that you have one test which is best. In fact, that serves your purpose for all practical purposes. But still, being a theoretician, you may be interested. Are there some other tests which are as which fulfill our task? That means they maximize the power. That comes from the second part. It says, look, there can be one more than one test if that reason where f1x minus c times f0x is zero. In normal case, there was no scope because that was the reason same as X bar is equal to D. I cannot play around with that reason because that reason has probability zero under X naught as well as H naught. But in this case, we saw that that is not the case. And I have a lot of liberty at my hand to play around with that. Is that okay? No, that is my requirement. You see, I would always, I would always want a test with the maximum power that level should be less than equal to alpha. So I'll give you another example last time, which is a trivial kind of example, but that would explain your point. So what I'll do is first I'll use my first part. 
First of all, only gives me a test for which it is exactly alpha and power is maximum. Now then I'll say that, let, let me now play around that reason f1 x equal to c times f0 x. And I see, yeah, I can play around with that reason and I can get lot many tests. And in fact, for all those tests, what you're saying is true. That e theta phi would be less than or equal to alpha, not exactly alpha. So in that nutshell, let me try to, since you have raised it, nutshell, let me ask you, you could have also posed the question, is it necessary that for all the time for MP alpha test, E theta zero, phi would be same as alpha, right? In a way, in a way your question connects to this also. The answer is no. Sometimes that may not be the case. The part one always gives me a test for which E theta zero, phi would be same as alpha. But Neven Pearson Lehman nowhere says that you cannot find a test for which E theta zero phi would be less than or equal to alpha and it will not be a most power. That a possibility always exists. But since my requirement was less than or equal to alpha, I found out one test for which is alpha and it meets my requirement. Okay, yeah.